The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast suffered. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Good morning, everyone. Our priest is, uh, just got an email from him this morning that uh, he survived his trip to Wyoming and uh, is back in Indianapolis with his son and looks forward to being back again with us next week. Uh, he asked us to do the preaching when he's not here, but as you all know, I'm not a preacher. So uh, we'll uh, just do some readings. Uh, start though with my old church, St. John's in, in DC, this beautiful cupola, look at the top and all eyes are on Christ, where we're all supposed to live. Just below him in the dome, he's surrounded by angels and archangels, except for two that are on little platforms. And in the iconography, the language of iconography, those are earth. And on the one side is John, who bought the word. He who comes after me, whose sandals I am not fit to tie. And on the other side is the Theotokos, and she's the link between Christ, who came to earth through her, and us. And uh, it's fitting that the church year that ends this month, and the new year begins next month, that the new year begins with the, the 12 great feasts, one of the great feasts that commemorates her birth. This is the beginning of the incarnation and the resurrection and our salvation. And it's also fitting that the year ends today, actually tomorrow, but we're celebrating it today, with her dormition, her falling asleep. So what I'd like to do is read for you from the Thessalonian, the uh, language, some of the language, from what happens at the dormition. Okay. Uh, as with the nativity and the entry of the mother of God, the texts for today are based primarily on non-biblical material. That is the proto evangelicum of James, the Gospel of James. At the time of her death, so it is believed, the mother of God was living in the house of St. John on Mount Zion. The 12 apostles were preaching the Gospel in different parts of the world, but so that they might see the Virgin once again before her death, all of them except Thomas, were carried miraculously on clouds to the holy city. Besides the twelve, the apostle Paul, together with the bishops Dionysius the Areopagite and Hierotheus and Timothy were also present at her bedside. As they stood round her, the Holy Virgin commended her spirit into the keeping of her son and God. And he himself descended from heaven and took her soul up with him in his arms. And sure enough, if you look at the icon for today, you see Christ standing there with a little child that is her soul going to heaven. Led by Peter, the apostles sang funeral hymns in her honor and carried her body down to the valley of Cedron, close to Gethsemane, where she was laid in a tomb specially prepared for her. They tried to interrupt the funeral procession, but subsequently did not. Thomas arrived on the third day after burial. We know he's always late to everything. Since he was anxious to look at the last time for the Theotokos, the apostles opened the tomb 
and found it empty. That's the resurrection. Now, one of my friends asked me once, my non-Orthodox friends, how do you keep your faith when you don't have a pope? I said, well, there are a lot of things that stitch together to keep our faith. We start, of course, with the gospel that all Christians share, but we have the liturgy, we have the icons, and we have the beautiful hymnography that we say at every service, especially at Vespers and at Matins. And uh, it's, it's a pity in our little parish that we're just getting started that we don't get to do the full vigil so we don't get to hear those beautiful sigura. Uh, every week. But I want to read you a couple of them. Uh, this is from Great Vespers for the Feast uh, by Theophanes. Come, O gathering of those who love to keep the feasts, come and let us form a choir. Come, let us crown the church with song as the ark of God goes to her rest. Isn't that beautiful? For today is heaven opened and wide as it received the mother of him who cannot be contained. The earth, as it yields up the source of life, is robed in blessing and majesty. The hosts of angels present with the fellowship of the apostles gaze in great fear at her who bore the cause of life, now that she is translated from life to life. Let us all venerate and implore her. Forget me not, O lady, thy ties of kinship with those who commemorate in faith the feast of thine all-holy dormition. And one more. At thy departing, O Virgin Theotokos, to him who was ineffably born of thee, James, the first bishop and brother of the Lord, was there, and so was Peter, the honored leader and chief of the disciples. And the whole sacred fellowship of the apostles, in discourses they showed forth heavenly things that sang the praises of the divine and amazing mystery of the dispensation of Christ our God. And they rejoiced, O far-famed virgin, as they buried thy body, the origin of life and the holder of God. On high, the most holy and venerable of the angelic powers bowed in wonder before this marvel and said one to another, Open wide your gates and receive her who bore the creator of heaven and earth. With songs of praise, let us glorify her precious and holy body, dwelling place of the Lord, on whom we may not gaze. Therefore we too, as we keep thy feast, cry out to thee, O far famed lady, raise up the Christian horn and save our souls. What a wonderful day, wonderful day. Okay.